What is up, my friends? I am here with my buddy Griff. Today, we are gonna to talk about a soft plastic technique that has been around for a long time, but it does not get utilized near as much as other techniques. And I think if you guys would incorporate it into your arsenal, you would catch a ton of fish. So today we're gonna to pick your brains. I know this is a technique that you do a lot. I do, yes. This is all things back glide baits. Are you ready to dive in? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku on Instagram. Sitting next to me is my good buddy, Griff at G Sticks Bespoke. Of course, we're being joined by our friend, Jeffrey the King. We're The Hookup Tackle USA. So today we're talking about backlights. Backlights. So what is a backlight? Explain it from the beginning for anybody that doesn't know what a backlight bait is. So a backlight bait essentially is a bait that's rigged to run away from you instead of come towards you, right? So you're gonna rig it used to go under things, like under brush, under docks. You know, if you're trying to maneuver in certain tight spots, you need a back glide bait because sometimes it's harder to throw your standard baits in those, those spots. Okay, yeah. so we talk a lot about different rigs like Texas rig, free rig, right? So, you know, we've, let, let's put it in maybe into context like that, just so that people really understand what we're talking about. So if my arm is like a dock pillar or a tree, right? Mm -hmm. Big tree, muscular tree, right? Skinny tree. So if you throw a Texas rig, mm -hmm. right? The nature of it being pegged on a bullet weight is when you throw it in, the bullet weight kind of drags it away and you never really know which way it's gonna fall, but inevitably it doesn't just fall right down the tree. It kind of just goes away from it, yes. right? If you throw a free rig, one of the advantages of free rig is if you do it correctly, you can throw it, you can give it slack and that weight falls straight down, but then your bait is kind of gliding whatever direction it glides. It yeah. might glide under or away or whatever, and then you work it back to your weight, right? Yeah. If you throw a Senko to this, as it falls, it's gonna have kind of a quiver, but again, your line is kind of creating a little bit of a, of a mm -hmm. draw, so inevitably, it's kind of moving away from it. Yes. With a back glide, you could throw it, and the bait is designed to go away from you yeah. as, you're, as you're going, so it's actually going into the cover or under the item. Yes, so you know, when you're trying to get somewhere, it's, it's, it can get kind of frustrating, like trying to make a perfect skip under a dock, or you know, flip something in somewhere like a tight spot, and you know, when that bait hits the ground, any any movement of the rod, that bait's coming back towards you, and you're not going to be able to fish that spot for as long as you want, as effective as you want. So the back gliding bait is going to be one that you can toss in there and almost leave it in place for as long as you want it to, because you can twitch it and it's just going to go right back. This go right I would back. imagine this is effective too, like in a tree situation where maybe there's branches where you pull it up a branch and before you get it over the top to come over, you can give it slack back again, right? And it mm -hmm. goes back into yeah. the cover. So it's just allowing you to keep your stuff marinated more down there, keep it more in the face of the fish. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So let's dive into some of the baits because this is a, a category. So I first became aware of the back glide like kind of early on into my tournament fishing, which have, would have been like mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first bait that I was ever made aware that did this was the Yamamoto Fat Ica. Yeah, it's classic. That's yeah. the one for you too? First one that you yeah. kind of knew about? You know, back in the day, this was the only bag lining bait. As far as I know, yeah. yes. Now maybe somebody watching will, you know, enlighten us and tell us about something else that maybe you know, was out, but this is, 
this is the bait that pretty much started this whole trend is Yamamoto Fat Ica. Now, uh, a lot of you guys may not have been throwing Yamamoto baits back in the 90s, but the Ica series of baits used to be really wide. And the Ica used to have, there used to be a Junior Ica, there was a Slim Ica, this is the fat version of that, right? And the Ica was originally designed to just kind of be a solid cord tube. So we used to use like the Junior Ica on a little ball head for bed fishing. It was super popular in places like Powell and Mead as just a solid core tube, kind of a transition or a cross between a Senko and a tube. Mm -hmm. And the way this became a backlight bait is just out of the nature, guys would rig this fat one like a Senko. So it was designed to actually fall like a Senko, but still give this kind of tube look. But then the nature of Yamamoto, because they're so soft and they tear, guys would flip it around yeah. to use it. And then they discovered, well, when I rig it this way, instead of it falling like a Senko, it actually goes away from me. Yeah. And then it became a thing. Yeah. So when these things, when you have it rigged backwards, when it starts to fall, this side is so fat and it's so heavy that it kind of pulls the bait. And everyone's going to do it differently. Like the Ica's pretty good at like, like a torpedo, it's just going to go straight down and then you pull it back up and then it's just going to go straight back down. Some will have do different things, but this one is, it's the classic, it's an old go-to, and it, you know, it's a proven fish catcher. Right, so let's, let's, let's rig something really quick, just to make sure that everybody is falling. Do you wanna rig an Ica? Do you wanna rig one of these guys? What? Yeah, let's rig this. Like? Wanna rig one of these? Yeah, here. So let's just make sure when we're saying rig them backwards, everybody knows what we're, what we're talking about, yeah. okay? So on a bait like this, a cross-style bait, we're so used to doing like a Texas rig, and we're gonna come in through the tail end, or the, I guess this would be the head, right? No, yeah. the tail. The tail and then Texas rig it, so it's sitting like this. So on a bait like this, when we wanna backslide it, we want the fat part to go away from us, so we're just going to rig it backwards. Yeah, so same idea, just now your line's coming out of the head. Yes. Versus coming out of the tail. Yeah. Same idea, same, same, it's just a Texas rig, like the Texas rig everybody knows. Yep, but the advantage of this is if you get a bait that's designed to backlide, then you get this kind of big butt section back here yeah. that's weighted to pull it away from you. Yes. Cool. The design always has a fat bull man on, the, on this back end, and that's exactly what it does. It's, it's pretty much running away from you. Like, I don't know if the fish really know it, but when I'm fishing it, I'm like, the, the bass knows that. If I pull it, it's fake, but if it runs away from me, it might trick them or something like that. Yeah, so it's a mental thing. Yeah. But the other thing is, is it lets you present these baits in places that you can't put a normal bait. Yes. So, you know, I, I this is a bait that became super popular for us dock fishing on mm -hmm. the Colorado River system. So a lot of the country, when they think of docks, right? So a lot of you guys are living in, in places that have normal dock systems, which are big, long docks, bunch of poles, right? And you can skip stuff under them and then you put Christmas trees under them and yeah. all this kind of cool stuff. Out here in Arizona, we don't have those. So our lakes fluctuate 60, 70, 80 vertical feet a year. So when we have docks, they're basically out over 100, 200 feet of water they're just basically big pontoons that are housing houseboats, yeah. sailboats, different things in different marina areas. Those are the docks that we have. Yeah. So there's nothing at the bottom, right? So when we're fishing docks, we're fishing bass that are literally just sitting under these pontoons or in the shade. And so they're not places that we can all the time like skip under. Yeah. We basically have to throw right to the pontoon and then our bait just kind of falls away, but with a backlighting bait, we could throw to the pontoon and it will actually go underneath yeah. that pontoon and actually get underneath in a place where the rest of the anglers can't put something, which is yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 And then like me, I fish a lot in the river and we have a ton of overhanging trees and they'll be like six, seven feet off the bank. And you know, the, there's no access to the bank. So you just cast near right at the edge of that tree line. And then that bait just goes back there and it gets in. So when are you from a, from a cover standpoint, Mm -hmm. right so like these trees that you're talking about when are you choosing a back glide bait over say a traditional flip or pitch bait that you could put with a, a bullet weight and a peg and just flip it in there and have it penetrate down when are you choosing a back glide over that so 
with a, a traditional flip or pitch bait, you kind of got to be close. And then at the river I fish in, we're making long casts. So it's more it's more effective for us to use a bait like this than it is to, you know, throw a Texas rig out there, get it caught in a tree, shake it out. This we can just throw it in front of the tree and it's going to go back there. And that's what that's when I'll use this right here. I find a lot of times when we're flipping, like Jeff and I earlier this year, we were fishing at, at like Alamo, we were flipping bushes, right? Mm -hmm. And depending on the depth in the area you were, some of those fish were positioned at the base of those bushes. Mm -hmm. And those were great for throwing like a traditional flip type rig where your bait could actually get to the bottom. Yeah. But a lot of those fish were suspended in, you know, deeper trees that might've been in 12, 14, 16 feet. And you could throw a back glide type bait and it could actually get into the tree, but slowly fall versus just go straight down to the bottom like a traditional flip. And you could pick off some of those suspended fish yeah. too. So there's a lot of versatility. Yeah, definitely. I know Louise that's around here. Louise, come here a second. So Louise is kind of like our like kayak guru around this area. Here, Louise, have a seat. Get out of here, Griff. Later. So, Louise, everyone. So, I know you throw a lot of back glide baits and you're fishing pretty much always from a kayak. Yeah. Right? So, what is it about a back glide bait that you like from a kayak angler standpoint? Mm -hmm. Like Griff was saying, to be able to get something into where you need it to be and just dropping it straight in is a lot, you could be a lot more accurate with that as opposed to like having to skip it and make like a long cast. The advantage in a kayak is you're able to just get right over the top, drop it straight in. Another thing too, being in a kayak, you're very limited with space and a lot of the baits that I choose are based on how well they function as diverse. Yeah, so, you, you can only bring so many baits on a kayak, Yeah. right? So, so the bait has to do more than just one technique. Yeah, so yeah. like a lot of those baits that I'm using are the same baits that I'm using on the free rig. So you're using stuff like I this? Want, yeah, I want it to glide pretty much as long as I can. I can always add a weight or a little nail sinker to it to get it to get down there faster. That's like one thing for sure that, you know, I really am looking at is versatility with the baits. So. so let me let me grab one of these out. So a bait like this, and we'll dive into some baits here in a minute, but just to make sure that I'm following on the kayak gunner standpoint, because you know, I guess the same thing could be said with any angler that we want a bait to be as versatile as possible. But you could take a bait like this that's designed to backlide, mm. but you're choosing, you know, I've got like 14 different backlide baits here, right? So you're choosing a bait that not only can you backlide, but you could also rig it front, mm -hmm. use it as a free rig bait, yeah. use it as a, a weightless bait. Yeah. So there are some baits that are gonna be designed to do multi things. Mm -hmm. How important is it from a kayak angler standpoint to use a bait that has a built-in action that you're not constantly having to manipulate? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's, that's really nice too. Like such as this one in particular, it's already, weighted more or less like you can see the bottom is a lot heavier than the top that's another thing i look for in when i'm selecting one uh, either both free rig and pack glide uh, is i want one flat side that always usually will let me or can tell me that i'm going to be able to throw it without adding weight to it just straight out of the packaging which is always nice not having to like make the rig more complex or whatever yeah it so it's that, simple so. yeah yeah so i think kayak anglers will appreciate this because a lot of times they're close you know I know there's a million different ways to navigate and maneuver a kayak, but a lot of times you're having to use an actual paddle. Yeah. <laughs> so if you could actually just toss something and let the bait do the work for you to glide under instead of having to manipulate it to go through the bushes, that could be that could be the difference between getting a bite and battling too many things all at one time. Yeah, that's as well. also another nice thing is you can um, it will be doing the work for you as the wind's blowing you around, or um, you know you don't have to be as stationary. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we look forward to you sharing more kayak content <laughs> with us. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you for joining. When are you going to get on a kayak with him? I'm afraid of... How many months have you been saying that? I'm afraid of drowning. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I don't like, Jeff? Let me hear it. Paddles. Being paddles. paddles. He doesn't like paddles. I am, or paddles. Fine. I am fine with both of those things. He needs a trolling motor. I do not Does like he? being cold. So we're gonna kayak in the summer. <laughs> when I fall off that bitch, I'm still fine.
All right, well, let's talk. Let's dive in and talk about some actual baits and the difference between certain baits in how they move and glide and fall. Okay, ready? So we talked about the fat Ica. When are you choosing the fat Ica? The fat Ica. Ever anymore? I use it sometimes. It's not my favorite. It's just, but I will throw it. I can always keep some on because I use the fat Ica for other things, but I always have them with me. So if I need to throw one, I'll throw one. Yeah, it's but, still highly effective. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the fat Ica. No. It's probably definitely still one of the best ones. It's just, it comes to a point, we talk about this in a lot of baits, that there's so many options. You have to have a good time and you have to enjoy what you're doing. Like you want to you get bit. Yeah, like, you, I want to catch more fish than you. Yeah. Right? But I also want to enjoy like there's just something opening up a package like this is cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cool factor is a, a big thing. Like yeah. Yamamoto has been around forever. We're kind of used to it. Everyone has Yamamoto in their stuff. Right. right? We just we just never like, oh, check out this. Well, it's kind of like it's like the a, end of the day, like if all we all did was throw a Senko all the time, yeah. we'd probably all catch so many freaking fish, yeah. but God, would life be boring. Super boring. Right? Yeah. So what's your what's your starting point then? The what? Doe Live Shot is my favorite all right. backslider. Here, talk about talk about the Doe Live Shot. All right. So and we talked about it a little bit with Louise, but yeah, tell us, tell us your thoughts on this. All right. So the Doe Live Shot is pretty much just like the Ica, right? It's a solid core tube, but when you backslide this one, it's gonna, it's gonna maneuver itself a lot faster to the bottom than most of them because there's nothing to hold it up, right? So I, I fish around a lot of brush, and the Doe Live Shot will go through brush like the best out of any of the other ones. It'll go through the tiniest little slots. It'll make its way down. Alamo is when I first started throwing it. Okay. And I would flip it into the top of those trees and you could feel it just banging off the branches and just like going And it's away. it's going through so easily, you think, because of the way the skirt and the body is just all streamlined and not like flared out? Yeah, there's nothing okay. to catch it on anything. It's, yeah. it's like a torpedo, it's like a missile. It's just going, <laughs> it's going into the tiniest little holes. You may have trouble getting the fish out of some of these holes because it's going to sneak its way into some some good stuff. Right. And then, you know, it's a super soft plastic. It's loaded with salt. So normally after every fish, you're going to have to change your bait. Yeah. But all I do is I take it off, throw it back in the pack, yep. grab a new one. Yeah. And then I take these and throw them four tubes in the river for smallmouth. So you use it like a tube. Yeah. So this is a bait that I love on a free rig just because it gives it that different kind of shimmy. I could see it being super highly effective as a tube. Yeah. Also, do you cut it down or just use it just no, as it is? I just take the hook out of the butt, put it in the head, flip it out. Easy there. enough. Yeah. So you're getting you're getting two baits in one, yes. which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah. What what's your next bait of choice or when are you when are you switching? So if this is your starting point, it, let's say you use this, if you're getting bit, you're obviously staying here. Yeah. If you're not getting bit, are you trying a different backlight bait or are you trying a different technique? What What's the mindset? So I'm gonna, if I know that I need to get underneath that brush, I'm gonna throw a backlight bait. So the next thing I'm gonna think about doing is going with a wider profile. Okay. So the bull slide is okay. gonna be my next option. All right, this makes sense. So here's a bull slide. This is another, so depths, Bull flats, I know a lot of you guys are familiar with that. Let's just take one out of the package. Let's, let's make sure they can see it. So bluegill profile baits have become super popular, yeah. right? And majority of bluegill profile baits are again designed to be more like a free rig, Texas rig. They're designed to move, you know, towards the angler. So this is depth's version of a backlide in the bull slide. So talk to us about this one. Yeah, so, so this one's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna rig it. Obviously, you know, you're gonna start here. This one is not gonna go straight. Okay. This one's kinda gonna do a spiral. Okay. Cause it's got this big flat edge that's just gonna catch it. And it's gonna hold up in the water a lot longer than a flat, something flat or torpedo shaped. It's not gonna go down. And it, sometimes it's gonna rock, and it's gonna roll, but it's always gonna be gonna do that away from it. Because of how much plastic is at the back end of yeah, that. Yeah, so it's, it's all this right here that's just weighted. Just now, when you're throwing these kind of baits, are you always just going with like an EWG style hook and weightless, or are you ever adding weight to encourage it to go farther or faster? In? So a lot of guys will add the weight 
if they want to use this specific bait. Okay. Like say, I'm not going to use anything but this. Yep. I'm just going to switch the bait. Okay. If I need it to move okay. differently. And I'm going to go weightless every single time on a Infini. An Infini or a Bell LZWG. It's the best Style hook. hook. Yeah. Okay. So when you add a weight, we're talking nail weights? Nail weights is the best way to okay. go. Okay. So just plug the boat with the nail weight. It adds something to the back end. And then it just gives you a little more oomph if you need it to go yes. a little bit deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Another great flat one that is a, another really good versatile one is the Dolive Gill from OSP. So the Dolive Gill is actually built as like a free rig bluegill style bait, but just the nature of the build, same thing. If you rig it backwards, uh, so again, if you come through the front of the head, it does have this little thicker back end. So again, it will pull it away from you so you can get that back glide as well. And OSP kind of anticipated that guys would use it for both ways. So they do have a little bit reinforced plastic on that thinner piece as well. So you won't tear it quite as easy as some of these other ones. So this could be a, just another great option. And again, the flat side might be a better option too if they're feeding on bluegills, tilapia, something that's more in that wider profile too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let's just dive into a few other ones. There's so many different ones, yeah. right? So we'll just fly through some of these pretty quick. I saw that you had this Kasumi design there. Tell me about that guy. So this one's new to us. I haven't got a chance to get go throw it yet, but this one is very similar to that doe live shot, but it has real life claws on it, right? And it, they come connected but you can disconnect them to get a little bit more action. I'm, this is the one I'm most excited about throwing this spring. Uh, this one's dope. Just to add it in the arsenal. Yeah it, yeah, it looks super sick. Yeah. And the texture and the feel of it is amazing. Okay. Yeah. This so one. this could be uh, one to mix in with the shot. Yes. For you. Another one that's relatively new is the Dynagon Neo from Imakatsu. Now this is kind of that classic soft plastic do absolutely nothing yeah. kind of bait. So it definitely glides away from you, but as it falls, it literally just falls and doesn't move. Yeah. So at least like the shots and the gills, they're gonna have some kind of little quiver or vibration or something. Mm -hmm. This does nothing, like yes. literally nothing. Yeah. But, but it's still super realistic because that. how many videos of a craw have you seen that when it moves and it just dies. Right, and it literally is just falling. Yeah. It's not always this crazy arm flap or different stuff. So sometimes nothing is is better. Yeah. Sometimes a little bit of quiver is better. Like, I think instinctively in our eyes, we just want to see the thing fucking do something cool. Yeah, we're always right? like trying to manipulate something. And right. Then, but you know, sometimes you just gotta just let it, let it be. Yeah, so this could be a good one if you need something super chill, just to yeah. get down really slow. You know, in Japan, the back glide technique is, is like, that's really where this technique is booming right mm -hmm. now. You don't hear about it much in the US, right? Yeah. Like if you follow any tournament circuits or whatever, you very rarely hear anybody talk about, oh, I back glided this. Yeah. In Japan, like everybody's back gliding and every brand is creating a back glide. Berkeley Japan creates the power glider. So again, it's kind of the power bait version of a back glide type of bait, and again, so it's just gonna give you that you know, power bait scent, but in a really thick bulbous bait. This was actually designed by Kenta Kimura. So this could be a good option. It's a really heavy, dense plastic, so it's gonna have a lot of pull down, a lot of pull backwards for you guys. Something else to keep in mind too is that, you know, we're talking about target fishing, Yeah. right? But you, if you have the patience for it, you can take a back glide bait and throw it in structure. There's yeah. no reason why you couldn't put this into a rock pile in 20 feet and then just kind of pull it up over a rock and then when you feel it lift, just kind of kill it yeah. and let it kind of glide back into the rocks instead of falling off yeah. the rocks. So there's a lot of stuff that you could do with these baits in open water if you had the patience for it, right? Yeah, it's the versatility of a back glide bait is insane. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's gonna do almost everything. Yeah. Right? True. Yeah. Yeah. So another one that's super popular for Mega Bass is the TK Twister. We've been talking about this one for a really long time. This is just a very simple bait. It's kind of similar shape to that Fat Ica, uh, but instead of having a bunch of like skirt and tube materials, it basically just has these two kind of tentacles that come off. So it's a very natural gliding bait. I find with this bait that I almost need the nail. Okay. 
So this one, I, I love the, the looks of it. I love that there's this like hook slot in the top, but I feel that if I rig it backwards, it just kind of falls straight, more like a Senko. And it works, but if I add a little bit of a nail, then it really kind of gets that movement. I, I feel like it doesn't pull as hard away as some of the other ones yeah. do. Now I know you've got kind of a, a secret weapon. Okay. So talk to us, talk to us about your secret weapon here. All right, so this is gonna become the newest way to back glide. It's very, very different. So the doe life stick fat. Everybody knows and loves the doe life stick. Mm -hmm. Some people are using the fat, but most people are using it either as like a soft plastic jerk bait or a free rig bait. Yep. Right? Or a Senko alternative, right? To just kind of toss and let it kind of yeah. shimmy. Yeah. yeah. So, but this is one of the most amazing backslide baits there is. And it's pretty much the only shad style one that I've thrown yeah. ever in my life. Yeah. It it does take a little bit of figuring out how to hook it. So it's not set up to be used as a backslider. Right. Was not designed as really a back yeah. glide bait, but in Japan they have really figured this out. Yeah. This is like one of the newer, hotter bait slash trends coming out of there. Yes. Yeah. So the hook's not gonna go all the way on the back end. You're gonna have to put it up in here and you're gonna have to bury that hook in there, that hook point. And then you're gonna use it just like a back glider. You're gonna pull it out and it's going to swim like a shad. And it's gonna swim away, away from you. you. Yes. Yes. So this is the one right here if you're looking for something shad style. Yeah, so just something different, different look, different action, different profile, different movement. And that's kind of the key yeah. to all of this. Yeah. yeah. It's very exciting when we find new things. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Like Especially you, when you're at the cutting edge, like when you're at the beginning of it. Yeah. And they have never seen it before. Mm -hmm. It's the best. Dude. Yeah. So like in here, you know, when we when we talked about it, I was like, oh fuck, I'm gonna buy some of these and go take it right now. Right. You know, and you go and take it out, and it's like, oh, it does work. This is it. This is it. Yeah. So yeah, get excited. Uh, these are gonna be a must-have if you're into the backsliding stuff. Uh, if you're new to it. It's a great one to start with too because everybody knows that the doe life stick just gets bit. Yeah, and again, kind of like the, the shot or some of these other baits, if it's not working backwards, then just flip it around, yeah. rig it forwards. You have a great bait that falls like a Senko or you can work like a fluke. So a lot of versatility mm -hmm. to a bait like this. Yes. Now, are you pretty much always throwing this on some kind of pitching type rod, like a heavier rod, heavier line, since we are throwing it around coverage? It's usually how I do it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So anything that I would, like a jig rod works for me, like a softer jig rod, uh, Mega Bass P5 Super Destroyer, uh, X-Bytes, anything that you would think like a Senko rod. Right. Same rod is going to apply to this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you adjust your line, the thickness of the line, the weight of the line to adjust your sink rate or are you always kind of staying at one place? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at like 16 to 20 on most of my setups. I'm okay. using heavy line. I don't use a ton of light line. So I'm just gonna tie it on. It's gonna work regardless of what line you have on there. It's just, you know, fighting the brush or, you know, those big girls like to sit down there. Yeah. And when you got to jam a hook set, you need some line that's gonna take it. Yeah, so, I mean, you're kind of at the mercy here. You know, I asked a question because I was curious, but I, I pretty much knew the answer. You're at the mercy of where you're trying to pull them out of. Yeah. So, I mean, it would probably get a totally different glide on 10 pound but you're breaking all of them off. Yeah, every single one. So you've got, you know, this is one of those techniques, especially if you guys are using it a round cover, you're gonna have to bump your line up to that heavier weight. 20 pound for me, Yeah. you know, but something in that range. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and then, you know, a lot of people ask you, well, can I just throw it in open water? You can throw it in open water, but you don't need to throw it in open water. It's gonna work. Uh, this is very specific to when you're trying to get stuff in, into places. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you can throw the same bait, rig differently like Senko style and it'll be work great in open water yeah but. and I, I think too just really quick the technique is going to be really important for you guys it's going to be a similar technique to like a free rig that you have to give it enough slack to be able to move away from you so this isn't a bait where you can throw out there and engage and keep a you know taut line all the way or it's not going to be able to, it's not like it's going to be pulling against you right yeah it can only go where you let it go so as you guys pitch to your target you got to make sure that you kind of just bow to it make sure you give it some slack make sure that the bait has a chance to actually pull away from you and you're not keeping it too tight to where it's just kind of penduluming 
down. So as you guys are pulling it up through cover and you feel it pull and you want it to glide away, don't just hold the rod there, like feel it pull away and then just kind of bend down to it. So you've created a little bit of slack that allows it to go. And then, you know, you'll know when they eat it. Same as anything else or saying or anything else, but you gotta give it some slack so yeah. that it has a chance to go away. Absolutely, you gotta let it do its thing. Yeah. Everybody loves to have contact with their bait, right? But that's where a good rod comes into play. Hundred percent. Yeah. You've got to have the faith in that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So that is a wrap. I hope that this was useful and you could take some of this information and incorporate it into places you're fishing now. Maybe some light bulbs went off, and you know you're envisioning places that you've been targeting, but you haven't really known what to throw to get the bait where it needs to go. Maybe some of these baits can can play a role. So they're definitely important pieces in our arsenal. Yeah. Hopefully they become important pieces for you guys. If you have questions on anything we're doing, the baits, the rigging, uh, you know, our approach to, you know, where or when we're using it, drop it down below and we will definitely answer those for you. Jeff can leave links to all of these products for you guys so you guys can check them out closer. And until next time guys, thank you for giving us some time. Good luck fishing. Good hanging, homie. Yeah, dude. See ya, Jeffrey. Oh my God, that was a long hang time. All right, guys, until next time, peace.